All right, so I'm here with uh, Khalif Raymond. He graduated from GAC in 2012, and he has uh, been gracious enough to, to take time out of his busy day and his busy schedule to talk to us about GRIT, uh, the, the quality itself. You know, we have the acronym, of course, the G-R-I-T, but uh, I couldn't think of a better person than Khalif to talk about GRIT uh, with his uh, history of GAC being a, 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 a three-sport athlete, and also just his experience at College of the Holy Cross and, and eventually now his career at the NFL and just um, the process that he had to go through and, and that quality of grit that was so necessary for him to be successful and, and that he continues to need. So uh, we're grateful for Khalif. Uh, we're going to ask him some questions. Uh, the first question being, hey man, so what's it like right now? Like, What was your day like today? Uh, is this getting to know you a little bit and your, your daily grind? Uh, you know, are you having a good experience with, with the Titans and, and just kind of, you know, what's a typical day like for you right now? Well, first, Coach, uh, thank you for having me. Um, it's kind of crazy that you asked because I uh, literally just got done doing some extra work, um, which is what I've learned to what I call being a pro. So um, just some things that I've, I've learned over time. Um, and, the, and the cool thing about this whole experience is, uh, fellas, for you guys that are listening, I was literally sitting in the same room doing the same things you guys are doing and uh, it eventually got me here. So I um, just want to tell you guys, first off, just keep going, man, and keep pushing. But today, um, uh, over the course of over the course of my years of playing, I kind of learned things that I needed to do to kind of get myself prepared to, to go in there. And uh, I mean, because this is this, as a, to be a professional, to go in there and, and be a professional football player. Um, so I start off in the morning. The first thing I do when I wake up is I, is I meditate. Um, one thing I've learned from me is that Football, especially at this level, and even at college, um, to me, I mean, people have their different percentages, but I think it's ninety percent mental. Um, everybody at this level is big. Everybody at this level is fast. Everybody at this level can catch. Everybody at this level can run. They can tackle. I mean, they can do it all. Um, and I think the thing that separates guys that make it and guys that don't, outside of something like grit. Um, is the mental side of the game. Um, that, that's something that not a lot of people focus on. I didn't even focus on in my first two years until I had to. Um, and thankful for the experiences that I've had because it, it made me um, look into the mental side of the game, see what I could do to kind of keep my composure, um, to be able to be uh, mentally aware when the game's going on, but, but more than anything, being able to focus and not let the game get to me. Um, so uh, I meditate first thing I do in the morning. Um, I did that before I eat, before I do anything. The first thing I do is feed my mind uh, before I feed my body, so that way I can um, carry through the rest of the day. Um, yeah, so I, I meditate in the morning. I generally try to get out and uh, do it out in the sun, do it outside, just to kind of stay as focused as I can. And then uh, I get to, like, to, for instance, today we had a, uh, I had a 7.30 meeting, even though the work day technically starts at 8, um, just to kind of get in some extra work to, to figure out some things. Uh, I, I play special teams as well, which is uh, ends up being huge at this level. Um, but got in an extra meeting early just so we can cover some things that we may not have time to cover later in the day. So um, get woke up this morning, 6.30, uh, meditate, get to the facility, try to grab a quick bite to eat, um, generally like some oatmeal, some eggs, um, um, some water, you're constantly hydrating, and then headed to the 7.30 meeting. After the 7.30 meeting, um, you, start, you start your day at 8 o'clock. So, I mean, you have, you have meetings, you go to the game plan, um, you go practice, have to practice, uh, I do, I do a little cold tub, just a little one extra little thing, uh, just because my body's kind of, it just came from an uh, intense grind of a workout. So um, I hit the cold tub, do a little bit of stretching, and then um, we have meetings at the end of the day. And then Coach actually called me today. And the um, coolest part about it is right after all the meetings are done, a lot of guys vote out of here. Um, but I think, like I said, the game for me is, is it's a lot more to being a professional than just to come to work and just practice because I feel like if you do 30 minutes, which in the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot. If I told you to go play 30 minutes of video game, you might get one or two games of Fortnite, one game of Warzone, and then again, it's over. So um, 30 minutes a day, I try to do something extra, um, whether it be stretching, cold tub, watching film, because if you do 30 minutes and you do that six times, six days a week before the game starts, just 30 minutes, nothing big. You have done three hours worth of work, more than anybody else has done. Um, because 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, whether it be cold tub or stretch, I feel three hours better during the game because I stretch in cold tub today. Um, I have three hours worth of mental work, whether it be film, whether it be playbook, whether it be something, going into the game extra than anybody else or even the opponent does. I mean, there's three hours 
of being extra, of being a pro, working on my craft. Um, for, and, and stuff like even – I'm sorry, go ahead, Coach. When did that start for you? When did you start having that mentality of, like, man, this the extra, the extra is where it's at? Um, man, and to be honest with you, Coach, it, it started my – my rookie year as far as just the a little bit of the extra stuff um it, it's just because uh I, I learned from a couple of guys like i was told my rookie year that even though you guys are rookies and you guys go home and you guys go to you know what I'm saying, you you lay down to everything emmanuel sanders and demarius thomas they have jugs machines at their house so like though they go home they're putting in extra work so um my rookie year, i would always catch jugs machines at the practice because like i don't have a jug at home so that was kind of my first thing. And even to even like for instance today, after practice, I call extra passes just so I can see it, just so I can feel it. And I actually told our, our uh, equipment guy today who throws them to me, I was like, man, the ball is slowing down for me because all you know, these extra reps that I'm getting may not seem much, but I just caught 40 extra passes. Now, and in practice, you may only get five to seven that are actually thrown to you with plays and everything. I mean, there's so many players on receivers on the field, but. And I just got 40 more catches today because of what we just did, or 50 more catches, however many you want to do. Um, so that started my rookie year. But to me, that was just part of it. Um, that was part of being a pro. That was kind of like the stuff that I – it's easy to go catch catch passes um, just because that's what we do. You're a receiver, you're sports guys, but it's hard to go stretch. It's hard to go get in the cold tub. That's stuff that you don't want to do. And to be honest with you, it wasn't until my third year I was playing with the Giants. And um, I was doing so much running – <laughs> it got to the point where they like in the weight room don't even don't even work out because you are putting miles on and I had to do the extra stuff because I would look at a guy there was a guy named Red Ellison they called him a pro he was always at the practice doing something extra Red Ellison was always the last guy to leave because he was always stretching Red Ellison was the one guy who was always healthy out of all the tight ends he was there Red Ellison was always it was, they called him the, they, they used the pro of the locker room because he always was doing something extra and I got to watch his daily routine and Red Ellison was always in the cold tub. Red Ellison was always doing some extra work, some extra stretching, some extra um, um, drills for punts. I mean, he was doing always doing something extra. And then my third year, I noticed that I had to stretch. I had to cold tub. I had to do extra because the best uh, thing that you can do is be available. Um, that's the best thing for you to do because if, you, if you're not on the field, then you can't do anything. But um, if you're available, then you can always improve your game. So around my third year is when I really learned to be a pro. I learned to really get warm because – um, excuses on me. They're, they're, you, I mean, you can give them an excuse for any reason. I'm not there because I ran too much and I pulled my hamstring. I'm not there because I wasn't eating right. I'm not there. I wanted to take that, that part of the game away. Um, I wanted to make sure I left no stone unturned because if I can do enough to make sure that I'm there, then I need to go, go, let's go ahead and do it. If I, if I, I, I'd rather not give that excuse out. I'd rather just go ahead and take care of business. Instead of giving excuses why I, I'm hurt. I'd rather not be hurt and go ahead and do my stretching, do my cold tub, do the things that I need to do to, so that, to make sure that I'm available. Because for me, uh, excuses just weren't good enough. They weren't. They, I, I'd rather have gotten it done instead of giving an excuse as to why I did. So, um, and then that was part of. It. I mean, it, especially especially in this league, once I learned to how much of being a professional was, and I learned how good everybody is. Um, you kind of have to you have to find something extra to kind of always elevate your game because. Um, everybody else is working just hard. They want the dreams just as bad as you are. So, um, yeah, around my third year in the league was when I finally learned to to kind of my complete system as a pro. What do I, what do I need to do if I need to go get the sign in a warm before practice? So during practice, I'm warm to make sure I can do, be my best self. Uh, am I meditating so that way when the ball's in the air or the punt's in the air, I'm not feeling, having that feeling of anxiety that I know I, I've taught myself to kind of be calm, be composed, and to go out there and handle business um, after practice. Because you have a whole other day the next day, am I cold tub and am I stretching? Am I doing the things to make sure that I can be the best player that I can be and to always be available? So, um, kind of things you learn over time. Um, but the coolest part about this experience is, like I said, I'm I'm an undrafted guy. I went to GAC, went to a small school, none of crazy, no no big crazy draft pick story. But these are the things that I find. I am not the draft pick. I'm not six five, but as a five eight and a half, I'm going to give myself that, um, a buck 80 guy um, who has survived in the NFL for four or five years is because of the little extra things that I've done. Instead of giving an excuse that, man, I'm, I'm not 6'2", oh, man, I'm, I didn't go to the big school, man, I didn't get drafted, that just wasn't good enough for me. For me, that's okay that those guys are, and that's a blessing to them. 
but I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure they had a different type of opportunity, but the work that I put in is going to keep putting me there. It's going to make sure that at the end of the day, there's, there, there'll be no excuses for me. I left everything I could out there. So, um, that, that was a, that was a, that was a part of the, the growing process. So, um, yeah, even, and then I didn't get to finish. I, I just got done doing the cold tub. Um, I met with coach to go catch some, um, just to, to look at the, some more game plan for special teams for next week. And then tonight, um, I, I look at film. I spend 30 minutes to me an hour to uh, doing some film, uh, whether it be looking at the place for the next day, doing a little bit of studying. Um, and then I don't get on my phone at night, though. I read at least, uh, I want to call it chapters, small chapters, but I at least read a page, two pages uh, of a book. Right now it's called The Inner Game of Tennis. Um, it's about, like, self one and self two, the person that um, – is in their mind during the games and a person that just kind of trusts themselves and gives themselves, you know, trust their, trust their ability and the preparation that they put in. So, um, but I do a little bit of reading and kind of just to put my phone down to kind of get, like I said, another, another mental edge, because like I said, that that's the part of the game that nobody talks about. <laughs> if I told you to go do curls right now, you'd be the first person in the gym because it feels good. But if I said, Hey, go read a book, you'd be like, ah, uh, maybe <laughs> I'll go study. I, I might, but that's the, that's what separates me. That's why at five, eight, I can go play receiver because they can put me in any position on the field because I spend that 30 minutes to an hour going to study, I to study my play. So um, that's not a question for them. Do I know what I do? I know what to do because I put the extra time in. Um, like I said, 30 minutes, even if I just spent 30 minutes tonight, by the time the game comes, I put three hours of extra studying in. I'm going to know my play. So, um, yeah, do that and a little bit of reading and um, try to stay as consistent as I can with that, Coach. And that's one day. <laughs> yeah, that's one day. <laughs> um, but it's a part of it. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it, it's called being a professional athlete. So um, yeah. to be a professional yeah. is to do A-plus work um, when you're out there. So, that's um, a nice level, man. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, yeah, let's, let's uh, take it back in time now as we kind of wrap up, as we focus on grit. And just, just a little bit of uh, nostalgia at GAC and, and speaking to – I don't know if you want to share a story or two, but just your experience overall in high school, how it shaped you, maybe something you would have done differently. But if you can kind of frame it around grit and this quality that we're focusing on and, and mm -hmm. how it was, whether it was important to you at one point and it was more important to you later on, you know, how, how you maybe – is it, we're assuming that you definitely have this quality of grit, but let's, let's talk about how you had it in high school or how, you know, life, mm -hmm. you know whether it was on the wrestling mat or was playing uh, for Coach, you know, Coakley, you know, on the football field, or, or, or winning the four-by-one, you know, your senior year. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you, you, you've had an illustrious uh, career at GAC. So let's just live in that a little bit, talk about grit. Mm -hmm. um, no, GAC was, uh, was a blessing for me. I actually came over from Parkview, and they, uh, they actually told me I was too small at Parkview <laughs> to play with the big boys, <laughs> and I quote. Um, but I came to GAC, and they, uh, they gave me opportunity. And um, – the one thing I knew, I was like, I, I knew hard work. That's, that's, I say, I think I was even smaller than I am now. I think I came into GAC uh, at 5'4", 109 pounds as a sophomore. And uh, the year before that, and I grew, because the year before that I was 5'2", 103. Um, so I was tiny when I came to GAC. Um, but like I said, I, I, I knew hard work. Um, and even, I, and I knew how much of a blessing it was, even, even in school, man. I, uh, I mean, to be to be in that situation, to be at that school, man, it's, it's a lot different than other schools that I've been to. I recently grew up in DeKalb County. So um, GSC, to me, was a blessing between the, the faculty, the staff. Um, I spent a lot of time at Coach Ball's office. I don't know you guys, you guys probably know a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely an opportunity for me. And, um, yeah, I, I just – I think what pushed me through that school is I didn't know – quit and if I said I was going to do something I was going to do it so even when it came down to, to grades um I love to play video games I play video games all day and I may play video games until two or three o'clock but I was going to get my work done like there was there was no question about it like if I play games until two or three o'clock then I might have to pull out a matter because I'm going to I'm going to get my work done so um that that helped me a lot and then um I also want to say my two th two other things my peers um I, I play with uh, LeBondre Nelson, Deshaun Daniels, Jonathan Ford, and uh, we learn to kind of push each other, even in class. Like, if Deshaun and Dre got an 87, <laughs> I'm shooting for an 88. It's not, it's, I'm not telling them I am, but they, they kind of push me a lot. So uh, learning to um, 
me and my peers and for us pushing each other. Those are my best friends now because we elevated each other. We pushed each other. Um, we were always competing, whether it was a 40 time, um, the shuttle. I mean, that we were always, even even in track, um, you know, Dre was the fastest at that point in time, but I was always pushing to, to, to beat Dre. He was always teaching me to kind of make each other better. Um, so um, my peers helped me. And then I, I do want to talk about wrestling because when it comes down to, to grit, that taught me a lot about myself. Um, because in wrestling is is one versus one. Um, so there won't be a lot of excuses, there won't be a lot of blame. I mean, it's you versus another guy. Um, and your preparation does a lot. But I think the biggest thing that showed me what grit truly was, was my first overtime match. Um, because in overtime, you look across at that guy and you're thinking in your head, I am tired as I possibly can. I have nothing left to give. Like, <laughs> I don't even know how I'm standing on this mat right now. And then you look across from you, and that guy's thinking the exact same thing. So at that point in time, the winner is not about skill. <laughs> it's not about ability. It's about who's willing to push through that last little mental barrier and win. Because the overtime is like one takedown. <laughs> it's like one takedown and you win. So it's, it's whoever wins basically the next point. So um, it's whoever can just get past that last little mental barrier. I'm too tired, man. I have nothing left to give to go out and win. Because there is going to be a winner out there, too. Um, and that kind of showed me what grit was because if I was willing to push through when I thought I had nothing left and I looked across from me and that guy and his head was thinking the exact same thing no matter how much he showed it, that's when I learned what grit was because wrestling wrestling gave me that experience at, uh, at GAC. So, um, yeah, no, that was, uh, <laughs> that, was a, that was a pretty cool experience. And then uh, I also, like, and then we talk about respect and, and love, man. So I broke my ankle my senior year. And the amount of help, um, the amount of love that I got, and um, how much respect that I showed everybody is kind of what pushed me through to that too. Because I had a lot of help along the way at GAC, um, especially my ankle. Because I had to, I had to crush up to the make. <laughs> I don't know if it's still called that, but uh, I had to crush up there when I was a, when I was a uh, when I was a senior. And every day, like just the that was my workout to crush up to the crush up to the to up that hill. So. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, it taught me a lot. I had a lot of help along the way. Um, uh, you guys, Chad. Chad, I spent a lot of time with Chad. Uh, he would put my foot in the bucket. And he was swirling around, knowing how much I didn't like it, but he was swirling around until he could get me back faster. Um, so, yeah, um, I learned. I learned a lot about how to push myself at GEC, especially like I said, I, I was five four, 109 pounds my sophomore year, and I think it wasn't until my junior year that I got to five seven. I may have been a buck forty. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't get I didn't get much bigger, but um, one thing that I could definitely have put a testament to was my my hard work, and that uh that definitely grew a lot there. So that's good, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap up with this. Just favorite memory uh, of PT, man. Favorite memory with Coach Schofield. What you got? Oh man, uh, <laughs> favorite memory of Coach Schofield. Um, dude, I think it was the first time that I that I. I saw him squat. He'd always talk about his knees and how bad they were. And uh, he was like, if I can do it, you guys can. And I remember, he, I think he put just a, it was just a bar. I don't know how, he had no weight on it. And then he squatted. And I'm like, Coach, with my healthy knees, I still can't get that low. I mean, he had some of the best, worst knees I've ever seen because they were all banged up. But dude could push himself and get to the perfect squat position. So that was always – they used to always crack us up because uh, – Coach Goldfield for, could do that. Um, but, Coach, I did have one more thing. Uh, and I just want to just – I don't know if you want to cut this however you do, but um, when you told me about grit, I started thinking about what it meant to me. Um, and to me, grit are – grit is something you can categorize that only you know, but it's the little moments that – and the decisions you make in those moments. And by those moments, I mean – when you're going to make a tackle, and it's you, and the, let's say me, the running back, just a little bit bigger, and you see him, and you know it's going to be a hard tackle, but you slip just a little bit more. Even though you could make the tackle, you slip just a little bit and stick your hand out there, and you don't necessarily make it. Um, it's benching, but the moment that I'm talking about is not the last rep, but the thought right before the last rep, when you know you just push that one out, and it's going to be hard. And you're making the decision here. Most of the decision isn't made when, the, when it's on the way up. The decision is made on the way down, whether or not you're actually going to push for the last rep or you're going to, uh, that decision has already been made. It's, 
is when you have to go in and block a safety. And you're like, man, I could I could probably use everything I can to go get him. Walking, ah, I just missed him this much. It's a decision when you see the ball coming and you're like, I, or do I want to make the decision to stick my hands out there? Um, it's the last rep on a sprint when you know you're tired, you know you could barely make the time, but if you really pushed it, you know you really could do it. It's the, those moments and it's being able to make the decision and have the courage to push in those moments. I think that's what brings grit. I think that's how you develop grit. So in the moments where you have just a little bit of thought and you can make a decision to, oh, I'm just going to barely do it, or I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to, I'm, I'm going to win this rep. I'm going to get that one more bench rep. I'm actually going to, I'm going to stick my head in there and make that tackle. And it may not, and it's not measured by success and failure, but it's measured by the courage to make that decision in those moments. That's somebody who has grit. That's somebody who makes it to the NFL. It's the guy who says, I'm 5'8", but I'm going to go make that tackle. Um, um, not the biggest dude, but when it balls in the air, I'm going to go attack it. Um, it's about the dude, the guy, man, I see the safety crashing down hard, but I'm going to go make that block. It's, man, I got one more rep, and I know like, I can stop here, but I'm going to go hang. It's, it's, it's the decision when you have 10 step-ups with the, with the dumbbells, and you hit nine, and you're like, oh, I'm good. Or maybe you even get to 10, and you're like, I can do some more. Those decisions is what grit is. Grit is that, that's, that's the guy. When you tell a guy has grit, it's a guy who you can tell in those split seconds when courage needs to be shown, they're willing to make the sacrifice and go do it. And like I said, it doesn't mean anything with success and failure. That's not how you measure grit to me. Success is having the courage and it is to, to make the decision and say, yes, I'm going to give it all I have. So um, if there's anything I could, that I would test to. That's legit. That's great. That's yeah. great. It's the little moments. Yeah, it's it's because you can call it a mentality or a quality, but it's basically a decision in a moment. You you've taken it and you've narrowed it down to like, okay, you can call it a mindset, you can call it a quality, you can call it a character trait, whatever. But it's at the end of the day, it's a decision in a moment. It's when you especially yep. anticipate either, oh, this is harder than I thought, or this is about to get really hard, and, yep. it, and it's just choosing to approach it a certain way. That's good. I mean, the courage of it regardless of whether you're successful or not, like your career, right? I mean, every year, that's this promise to you, right? Yep. You're having the courage, you know, on a daily basis, on a momentary basis to, to invest in yourself. And so that's good, bro. Well, I appreciate yeah. your time, man. Uh, of course, I mean, I wish we could, you know, film a 30 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> no, man, I know. I, I can talk all day, so I'm bad. I'm bad. Five, five, oh, five, yeah, five, coach, five, connect at Netflix. We'd probably get a documentary on you, but... <laughs> But yeah, I no, you, you, And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go and let you sign off, and uh, and we'll go from there. All right, coach. Have a good one, man. I appreciate you, sir. All right, brother.